Hello there, I'm Michael Fudge, and thank you for tuning in once again. Believe it or not, this is our 10th video in the series on mastering the SQL select statement. In this video, we'll cover set operators, and we'll use these operators to combine queries together, that is, combine our common table expressions into a single output. As usual, if you want to follow along, check out the links in the video description. Okay, let's get on with the demos. Okay, here we are again out in Azure Data Studio, and I have run a query on two tables, a surveys table and a customers table. And I want you to imagine that you work for a company that has customers and you sent out a survey instrument to your customers and a few customers responded back, but not everybody. And what you might want to know with your SQL is who responded to the survey, who did not respond to the survey, uh, things like that. And this is a pretty good use case for the set operators. Now, what's interesting about the set operators is you can accomplish many of the tasks that the set operators do with a traditional table join. The reason why I like the, the set operators at times is they do make my queries, um, they make a little more sense to me at times when I'm trying to solve the, the query in a certain way. It, it should know that most database management systems will optimize the use of the set operators to the most efficient means possible so that the query, while it looks longer than maybe using an outer join or whatever, it, uh, it tends to be the same query underneath the hood. Okay, so without further ado, let's sort of get into it. Let's first, let's understand the, the data that we have here. We have an email in this data set and an email in this data set, and that's all they really have in common. So that is gonna be what we're going to use to, to figure out who's in what set. Now, one of the things to note about the set operators is that you have to make sure that the, the columns are compatible with each other. That is, you'll notice that this one has an IP address, but this one does not. This data set up here does not. And so I can't really combine um, the IP address from one and not in the other. You'll see that this, this creates sort of like an issue. So let's start with what's the, probably the most common um, set operator, the union set operator. The union set operator uh, works just like a, a normal set union. That is the values from this top data set surveys and then the values from this bottom data set, customers, I I'm going to grab everybody, whether they exist in here or exist in there or exist in both. And what's different about union from maybe other things is that you, you are going to get back a distinct set of rows. Always. You're always going to get back a distinct set of rows. And that's very handy because we will guarantee that we get the output has entity integrity. So let's do an example of that. And then I'll show you some of the, the caveats of using the set operators. So let's take select email from surveys. Oh man. And then let's union that with customers. And what you'll get is a single combined output of all of the emails in both, and none of them repeat. So you might be wondering, well, hold on a second, Mike, uh, which ones repeat? So this is everybody that's either in the surveys data set or the customer's data, data set, but you might wanna know who's in both data sets. That is a different set operator, that's an intersect. So select email from surveys. Intersect, select email from customers. Boy, if I could spell surveys, I'd be in, in great shape. Boy, and customers. I don't know what is going on with me today in the keyboard. Holy smokes. All right, so let's check this out. And you'll see that these 
people filled out both. So you might want to see the customers who did not fill out a survey. Right? So I want to take the set of customers and then I want to remove from that set of customers everybody that also filled out a survey because there's more customers in surveys. Survey fillers. So that would be an accept, which does a set difference. Like that. So these five customers did not fill out a survey. All right, now, you might say that's great, but you know I'm not really sure you know, who's in this one and who's in that one. So maybe if I gave you some counts, that would, that would be a little better. So let's put a, a query together that sort of visually helps you demonstrate what you're seeing here. So if I go select count from customers, all right, that's how many customers I have, 30. So I'm gonna call this you know, I don't, it doesn't matter what I call this. This actually is a very interesting facet of the way the set operators work is that what is this column going to be named when I combine two of these together? These were both email, right? But in this situation, it's going to be different. So I'm going to, this is a count of each of the different set outputs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little magic column here called customers. Uh, as um, ta as source, and then I'm going to have my count in there. So there's 30 customers. I'm going to union that that with select surveys as source, and then let's count that from surveys. So there are 30 customers and 25 people filled out the survey. Now you'll see that there's no column name here. Now this brings up a really interesting facet of the way that the set operators work. If I alias this column down here as survey count, and then I alias this column as customer count, which one is it gonna use? Well, it uses the first one. See that? It uses the first one. So it really doesn't matter that what I alias the second one as. I don't even need to alias it at all because it's only going to use the first column name. So I'm just going to call this row count. So now you know that there are 30 customers. There are 25 surveys let's do um, another union and let's union this remember we did this intersect right check this out <laughs> okay what is going on there that's a little much right plus it's not really what we want because what I want, well, let's let's do an easier, well, let's finish this example up. So you might do this and then what happens, but that's not what we want, we want counts. So this is where using a common table expression that's named makes sense. So I might say with, and I'm gonna call this customer surveys as, that and then down here I'm gonna say select select customer surveys as source and I don't really need this alias you know that now count 
the rows from customer surveys. Okay, and I, I need to put a go in here. I think it's confused because I need to batch this. Okay. All right, now we get, there are 30 customers, 25 surveys. There are 25 customers that filled out the survey. That is, there's nobody that filled out a survey that isn't a customer. Okay, because just because there's 25 surveys doesn't mean that every single one of those people that filled out a survey was a customer. It could have been someone who filled out a survey that wasn't. That is not the case here, but I can, I can easily add that um, to show you. Let's continue and add another um, common table expression here. Let's do select, let's do this one here, the exception. Let's put that here. And then this one is going to be, let's call this, mm, what do we want to call this one? Let's call this one. customer no survey as okay then we can come down here and union that this is something that you probably couldn't do with a table join easily so this is the count of people who are customers that did not fill out the survey see what we get now okay so 30 customers 25 surveys 25 customers filled out the survey five customers did not now I guess I should probably add a customer here um, that did not fill out the survey just so, or that is not a customer so let's do this it's poor design I should have handled this before, but that's what I get. So let's go here and find that surveys table. Okay, and through the magic of editing, I have made my insert statement. I added myself, and I am certainly not a customer in this data set. So I filled the survey out. Let's run it again. Now you'll see that there are 26 surveys filled out, but 25 were by customers, and then five were customers that did not fill out a survey. So to complete the story, let's show the number of surveys that are not customers, and there should be one there. So we would do that like this. Let's add one more common table expression. Survey, no customer. You can certainly do this with outer joins however I don't know how you would combine those outer joins into a single output like this that would be very rather tricky that would require a, several common table expressions Oops. And then account from survey no customer. And this is the whole monstrosity here. It's pretty big. But now we get a full synopsis of what happened with customers and surveys. There's 30 customers, there's 26 surveys. There's 25 customers um, who have filled out the survey. There are five customers who did not fill out the survey. And there's one survey that was filled out that was not a customer. So this sort of gives you that, that whole synopsis. So the last set operator that we didn't talk about here is union all. And what union all does is it concatenates to sets together
And when you, it's not like Union, because with Union All, you can have duplicates. And so duplicates are okay, and thus no entity integrity. So if I were to take this up here, And when I union it, we saw before that we got 25 emails. Oh, we got 31 emails, right? Because it's 30 customers and then 26 plus 26 um, survey users. But there's one extra survey user that I added. So that makes 31. Because right, really what you have here is surveys, 26. And then customers, 31. And then when you combine them together, I'm sorry, customers is 30. When you combine them together, you get all of the customers, all of the surveys, and none of the repeats. Okay, contrast this to a union all. which will be a lot more rows, 56 rows. So how do we get 56 rows? Well, here you got 26 rows, and then here you got 30 rows. So together, 26 and 30 is 56. And if you look through here, these, these will repeat. Now you might say, well, I don't see them repeating. Well, you'd have to sort them to see them repeating. So down here, if I say order by email, then you can see them repeating. See that? Notice that when we use sort, by the way, th this is a common table expression, this is a common table expression, but what's not part of a common table expression is the sort, okay? The sort happens at the end. So really this order by is sorting the entire union expression. Okay, it's the very last thing that happens. It happens after the column aliasing and all that stuff. Okay, but that's where union all comes into play. If you were to take this and run a distinct through it, it would be the same as doing, doing the union. Union all is very useful when you want to just take data sets and append them together. Okay, so you have data set A, B, and C, and row by row, you want, to uh, you want to append them together. Imagine you have a table of January orders and a table of February orders and a table of March orders, and you just want to make one big table of all the orders. Uh, union all is the, is the right way to do that. Now, you could probably safely union them because the orders don't overlap, but to be 100% certain that you're not going to have anything drop off, uh, I would use union all because that is what the union all operator does is it just appends data sets together. Okay, so that is the set operators.